Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, President Biden will mark the second anniversary of the January 6th Capitol attack today. We'll show you how he's honoring 12 people who stood up at the riot crowd that day. And outside with live cam, little clouds this morning. We were, didn't have this yesterday, but we got it today. We're yeah. looking forward to a um, different kind of weekend mm -hmm. than we've had during the week. And it is Friday. Yes, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining Ooh, us. Made it to Friday. Yay. 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 That's all you got is yay. That's it. It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, Friday but it's, it's early Friday. It's early yes. Friday. Yes. So. Okay, well, as the morning goes, you get more. I'll, I'll be more enthusiastic at 2 yes. o'clock today. Anyway, uh, we've got, <laughs> we, yeah, we do have a few clouds out there this morning. Temperatures are still on the uh, the chilly side. We've actually gone up a couple of notches uh, here and there. 36 in comfort now. So we've got these mid uh, 40s, 50s, a uh, couple of 30s out there in the hill country. The dew point temperatures are starting to come back up. We also have very light wind out there and we're not seeing any fog yet. Just keep an eye out for a patch or two of fog. There's a little bit down way down along the, the coast there at Corpus Christi further on out to the east in toward uh, Houston. That's it for right now. But again, just because now the cloud cover is going to help us out a little bit, but there's still a lot of clear skies in places. So again, just watch out for a patch or two of fog to uh, develop this morning. Mountain Cedar, remember yesterday it did drop significantly from the previous day, about a third or more of what it was still on the high side. The updated count is going to come out later on this morning. And as far as this morning goes, we're going to have a, a few clouds hanging around here. We were in the upper 40s earlier this morning. Like I said, temperatures now with that cloud cover coming on in here have uh, kind of stabilized a little bit, but may drop in places where there's still some clear skies. Then 77 for high temperature. We're going to have more sunshine today with a few clouds left over. It's going to be kind of breezy wind out of the southeast. That's going to continue to pull in the humidity. And so tomorrow morning is really going to be on the well, clouds overnight, really foggy, misty, and then a couple of showers more on the weekend forecast. The entire weekend is not going to be cloudy and uh, drizzly and rainy. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Steph, David. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a neighborhood basketball game ends in a shooting at a park on San Antonio's north side last night. It happened around 10 o'clock in the 2300 block of Copper Hill Road at Oak Haven Park. San Antonio police say several teens were playing basketball at the neighborhood court and a fight broke out. That's when police say a man in his 20s or 30s fired several shots, hitting a 19-year-old male in the arm. The gunshot victim was taken to the hospital. No official word on his condition this morning. Police are still looking for the man who fired those shots. And today marks the second anniversary of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. President Biden making the occasion with a solemn tribute, and he'll be honoring those who protected the Capitol building that day. Also this morning, there's word of a new lawsuit stemming from the death of an officer who defended the Capitol, and the lawsuit names former President Trump. ABC's Alex Perche has more. This morning, the longtime partner of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who died from injuries suffered during the January 6th attack, has filed a wrongful death lawsuit against former President Trump and two people in the crowd that day. Sicknick was hospitalized after being assaulted with bear spray. He died January 7th, the medical examiner saying the cause was a stroke. The new lawsuit, which claims a conspiracy to violate civil rights and the aiding and abetting of an assault, seeks $10 million from each defendant. The lawsuit saying the horrific events of January 6, 2021, including Officer Sicknick's tragic wrongful death, were a direct and foreseeable consequence of the defendant's unlawful actions. A spokesperson for former President Trump responding, saying President Trump clearly and unequivocally stated that Americans should peacefully and patriotically make their voices heard. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn worked with Officer Sicknick. He tells ABC's Pierre Thomas in an interview airing Sunday on This Week that the mob that day was vicious and called him racist slurs. He says he holds Trump responsible. He needs to be held accountable, and that's why all eyes are on the Justice Department right now, because they're the ones who can bring forth accountability. Today, Officer Dunn will be at the White House to receive the Presidential Civilian Award from President Biden, the second highest civilian award in the country. Officer Sicknick will receive the award posthumously. Biden will also present the award to state and local officials who resisted Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election, including Republican Rusty Bowers, the former Speaker of the Arizona House. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill, dozens of military veterans have now delivered letters to several House Republicans demanding that they condemn political violence. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 
Good news this morning. Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin has started communicating and writing with his family and others. They've been in his bedside since he went into cardiac arrest three days ago. His first question was, did we win? Doctors responded by saying, yes, DeMar, you won. You've won the game of life. Meanwhile, the NFL has also announced that it has officially canceled the Bills Bengals game that was previously postponed on Monday night. The league has also planned a vote for today with two adjustments for the AFC playoffs on the table. Tonight is the night for the big Mega Millions jackpot. The latest haul up for grabs is now at $940 million. The prize ranks as the sixth largest in U.S. history. And that comes less than two months after a player in California won a record 2.4 oh four billion dollar jackpot now if 940 million is too much for you tomorrow's power jackpot <laughs> is just 325 million and tomorrow's texas lotto jackpot is over 28 million dollars right look we did it <laughs> there, there's all the zeros all the zeros <laughs> on 940 million dollars that's a lot of zeros yeah that that would be fun to write a check like that wouldn't it ah <laughs> uh, and who too much for somebody I don't, I don't know. <laughs> 436 and 50 degrees. From a smart light switch to a smart bath mat, we're going to show you some of the quirky gadgets at this year's Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Plus an update on a health procedure for San Antonio Spurs' Devin Vassell and the Dallas Cowboys did a few things to go just right so they could win the NFC East this weekend. Let's take a look at the roads out there with Transguide. Happy Friday. A look at I-35 at Ben's Engelman. Things are moving and there are vehicles on the roadway at 4.36 a.m. Wow. People got places to go, things yeah. to do. Yeah. It's the weekend. <laughs> headed that Almost. direction. Spurs starter Devin Vassell will have an orthoscopic procedure on his left knee Next Wednesday, the Spurs tell us the surgery will be performed in New York on January 11th, and there is no timetable for his return. The cell has been bothered by soreness in that left knee that caused him to miss two games. That's before he returned against Brooklyn, only to have to sit out the Spurs' loss to the Knicks in New York. In his absence, you should see more playing time for Romeo Langford and Malachi Branham. And the Spurs made a trade yesterday with the Boston Celtics. Don't get excited, not, not the big deal. They will host the Boston Celtics Saturday, AT&T Center. Now, the Spurs sent a protected second-round draft pick to the Celtics in exchange for Noah Vonley and cash considerations. But the Spurs then waived center Gorgie Dang to complete the deal before waiving Vonley as well. And the Spurs are in town tonight hosting the Detroit Pistons. Chip-off set for 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Hey, with just one game left in the regular season against the Commanders in Washington on Sunday, the Dallas Cowboys not only have the opportunity to win the NFC East, but they have the opportunity to get the number one seed in the NFC. That depends on what happens to the Eagles and the 49ers this weekend. For running back Ezekiel Elliott, how does the team approach this game knowing it could be his last season wearing the star? We approach it like every other game. We're looking to to to, make, to get a win, um, to build some confidence, to you know build some momentum uh, going into these playoffs. Uh, yeah, you definitely want to had the opportunity to improve our, our seating and uh, you know a chance at winning the division. Um, but uh, we just want to ha handle all our business and do what we need to do to you know to make sure we're putting our best foot forward uh, heading into the playoffs. All right, so that works out Sunday afternoon. It's time now to hear from the players participating in this Saturday San Antonio Sports High School Football All-Star Game presented by HEB. A total of 118 student-athletes representing 64 high schools have been chosen to play tomorrow at 5 o'clock in the Alamo Dome. To see everybody in all different areas, doesn't matter if you're private school, 1A, 2A, 3A, or even 6A, you know what I mean? To come together and play as one, for our final year to come together, it's amazing. Honestly, it's great. It's like you kind of think about like the, the better players on every team and how like if y'all were on one team, you know what y'all could do. Well, I guess this is our chance to see. And good luck to all these athletes this weekend. A lot of college yeah. scouts are here checking these uh, checking these young guys out to see if there's somebody that kind of slipped through the cracks that didn't get a scholarship offer. Yeah. They might want to offer somebody. Well, true. Exciting time. Their yeah. time to shine. Yeah, exactly. Time now, 442 and 50 degrees for now. Products of the future, and soon you might be able to get your hands on them. 
Coming up next, a preview of what you can expect at this year's Consumer Electronic. <laughs> Oh, electronics. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> wow, is it Friday or what? It is Friday. Also, up next, the family of one of the University of Idaho students killed is revealing more about accused murderer Brian Koberger. Welcome back. It's 445. The suspect accused of murdering the four University of Idaho students made his first appearance in court. ABC's Kana Whitworth talks about what police have released so far in today's GMA First Look. All right. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the case against accused Idaho murderer Brian Koberger. Count two alleges that you committed the felony offense of murder in the first degree. The maximum penalty for that offense, if you plead guilty or are found guilty, is death and or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? Yes. Overnight, the family of one of the victims, Kaylee Gonzalez, now speaking out after coming face to face with the suspect in court for the first time. I want to make this as difficult as possible for the defendant. I want him to feel and see what he's done. Um, and if that means we have to be uncomfortable and we have to go through some things, then we will. And coming up at 7 a.m., former FBI agent Brad Garrett and legal expert Dan Abrams weigh in live with your GMA First Look. I'm Kena Whitworth, ABC News, Moscow, Idaho. Thousands of robots and futuristic gadgets being unveiled at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us what's new and what's next. Innovation, some of it pretty quirky, is on display. This is the massive CES, the Consumer Electronics Show. Sure, robots are fun, but the main theme is serious. And that's technology that's being used to solve some of the world's biggest challenges. Such as food supplies. John Deere unveiled a robotic fertilizer. It reduces costs and chemicals. For the home turf, though, there's this dandy robot. It roams your lawn and kills weeds. There are even smart lawn sprinklers. Here's a bright idea, Nanoleaf's smart light switch. It learns your light habits, and so it knows when you want it dark, it knows when you need it bright. And you don't lift a finger. TVs are getting smarter too, and now LG is out with a big 4K screen that's totally wireless. Even the bath mat has gone smart. You stand on it, um, and it does a full body analysis. There are plenty of gadgets and gizmos for cars, like this next Space IQ smart dash cam. One camera points out the other in. If it uh, senses sound or motion while you're not there, you'll get alerted on your cell phone. Uh, and then the camera turns on and you can see what's happening. For parents, how about a self-driving stroller? And this product is a real talker, the time kettle. These are real-time translating earbuds. One for your ear, one for the other person, and you can converse in 40 languages. And for parents who don't know why the baby is crying, there's a smart translator for that too. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Interesting stuff. Let's look out there with TransGuide, I-35 at Ben's Engelman. Quiet, but things are moving. Kind of like that car camera thing. If somebody was breaking into your car or something. Yeah, like you could have good video It'd be right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. And for the outside as well. True. There's motion outside. Yeah. What would you I buy? Just, <laughs> what right. would you buy? None of it. No, that, definitely not, <laughs> not the stroller. I was not. I was, I was like, yeah, some of it's all right, but I'm not yeah. just been, because you know it's going to be way over. Oh, that's true. We have you to know, wait. The like bath mat two. thing was kind of cool, but, yeah. you know, that's like, I'll just step on the floor and be good. You'll be fine. And the light switch that knows when you oh. want it dark and light. Yeah. What if you want it light when it's usually dark. Dark. dark? Does it let you turn it on? It's no, you're not supposed to turn on the lights right now. Ooh, I don't know if I want a I light know. switch telling me anyway. what to do. And the thing talking to you in 40 different languages would just, that's just my voices <laughs> in my head. So, Four voices. Uh, anyway, all right. I uh, don't know if we're going to be able to see the moon this morning just because we've got a couple of clouds that have moved on in here, but it is the full moon and the full wolf moon as it is known in lore. And what a beautiful view there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Looking off to the, now nah, i got some clouds hanging around here. Maybe it's going to, there'll be a little break here or there, but um, yeah, we got that's an, it, unfortunately, the past couple of mornings, we've had that beautiful moon set that we've been watching. 50 here in town, 43 in Balverde, 36 Comfort. That's the, the chilly spot, 43 in Kerrville. Still, you want to grab a, a jacket. The humidity, now these numbers have really gone up compared to where they were at this time yesterday. As a matter of fact,
fact, up about 10, well, 25 degrees higher in Rock Springs. So more humidity has moved on in here. We still have basically just a very light wind, and so the ingredients are kind of in place to get a little fog to form up. There's only a bit down here along the coast as of right now, uh, but just kind of be on the lookout throughout the rest of the morning. The cloud cover is going to help out with any preventing any fog from from forming up. But like I said, just be on the lookout for it. Now watch what happens with humidity throughout the day. These dew point temperatures are definitely going to start to go up and it's not going to be oppressively humid, but you'll start to notice it a bit more, especially later on this afternoon. And these numbers really go up going into tomorrow morning. That's going to lead to a lot of fog mist tomorrow morning, and they stay up throughout much of the day. Then notice how the drier air starts to work its way in here. That's along the front that's going to be moving on through. Again, it's not one of these big blasts of cold air. It's more of a Pacific front, and that will just get rid of some of the humidity. So we'll have some clouds around this morning. Temperatures will still stay right around mid upper 40s this morning, and then we're going to be seeing more sunshine later on today. A few more clouds this morning and uh, the, by the afternoon we'll see plenty of sunshine. We'll make it up into the upper 70s, 77 for high temperature wind out of the south and pulling in that humidity. It's kind of breezy today. So here's what's going on with the computer models. A few clouds uh, hanging around here this morning, then more sunshine later on today. Then the clouds really start to thicken up later on tonight and we'll have a couple of little sprinkly showers around tomorrow with some of that fog and that's going to be the situation through the morning hours, then a few showers scattered about the area. Not a big rain event, but just a few of them as that front approaches. The majority of the rain tomorrow is going to be to the south and east of 35, and that's going to be even into tomorrow night and early Sunday. We'll have a few leftover showers around here early on Sunday. Again, the majority of it down to the southeast, and then we clear out later on in the day on Sunday. And once again, overall, looking at the upper level wind pattern, we've got these little waves kind of coming on through here, but we're not seeing any of these upper level wind lines dropping straight down out of Canada, which means we're not seeing any big, huge blasts of cold air anytime, at least in the next week to even two weeks down the road as it looks right now. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. So we'll have some clouds hanging around here this morning. Like I said, watch out for a patch of fog or two and then 77 for a high temperature later on today. A lot of clouds overnight tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. Fog mist in the morning, a few showers here and there overnight into early Sunday. Again, especially down to the southeast. Doesn't mean you won't see anything here in town, but the majority of the rain down to the southeast. Slightly cooler, not cold, slightly cooler Sunday, 67 down to 46 Monday morning. But again, none of those numbers are anything, you know, really making you stand up and take notice as far as any cold air moving in here. Well, you know, we'll we'll take the mild for now because who knows what will right. come later. <laughs> February still to come. You never know. With that the rodeo is still coming, so just it'll be cold. Always is, right? Yeah. Nice. It is. 452 to 50 degrees. Coming up next, another highly anticipated single will be released soon. This one from an all star cast of iconic singers. We're going to tell you when. Coming up. Welcome back. It is five minutes away from five o'clock. A Houston rapper is remembered, plus an all star cast of iconic singers puts out a new single. For our latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. And I see you again soon. Emotional tribute from rapper Quavo for his nephew and fellow Migos member Takeoff, who was shot and killed in Houston back in November after an argument at a bowling alley. The song called Without You was released on Wednesday along with a music video in black and white. The lyrics focus on the experiences Quavo shared with Takeoff and his pain after losing him. He sings in part, can't tell you how many times I cried, I don't know if I'm the same without you. Do you think you could get us in? Follow me. Another highly anticipated single coming out later this month. This one from an all-star cast of iconic singers. The song called Gonna Be You from the Paramount Pictures film 80 for Brady features Dolly Parton, Belinda Carlisle, Cindy Lauper, Gloria Estefan, and Debbie Harry. The film is inspired by the true story of four best friends who take a wild trip to the Super Bowl in 2017 to see their hero Tom Brady play. Brady is a producer on the film that's Stars Academy Award winners Sally Field, Rita Moreno, and Jane Fonda. 
also hitting the big screen the old way, a Western film starring Nicolas Cage as a retired gunslinger turned respectable family man. When an outlaw puts his family in peril, he teams up with his 12-year-old daughter to fight back. And happy birthday to Eddie Redmayne, the British actor and Academy Award winner, is 41 today, while Rowan Atkinson, the actor and comedian known for playing Mr. Bean, is 68. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Rena Roy, ABC News, Los Angeles. The Brady movie looks kind of fun. Yeah, I want to see that. And then maybe that is a like a true Western. I hadn't seen one of those in a while. Oh, I know. It's Nicholas interesting Cage. with Nicolas Cage yeah. to be in that. <laughs> we'll check it out. 457 and 50 degrees. Same song, different verse in Washington. Republicans once again keep the Speaker's chair of the U.S. House empty. What's next for party leader Kevin McCarthy after he failed again to win enough votes to seize the chamber's gavel? And a San Antonio middle school teacher is accused of soliciting a 14-year-old female student. What the victim's parents are saying about the situation. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking over at I-35 at Loop 410 where things are moving this morning. Also at I-35 in New Braunfels. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio this morning. We're going to be checking with him very soon. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Fire breaks out at an east side home overnight. We'll tell you how many people and how many pets were inside and how many were able to get out safely. The House Republican leadership standoff now entering day four. I'm Alex Brashe in Washington with the latest on whether or not Kevin McCarthy is any closer to being elected Speaker of the House. And let's take a look out there with live cam starting in the 50s. Uh, not as cold as yesterday, but still a little chilly. You might want a light jacket when you step outside. And good morning. It is 501. It is 50 degrees and it is Friday. Yes. Happy Friday. Maybe. So now can we, we can recover from the week of recovery from holidays. Yes. And have a weekend to do that. And I guess rain over the weekend. Uh, not for the entire weekend. Okay, so good, Sunday good. afternoon still, you know, there was a little bit of question there for a while. But Sunday after, afternoon is looking very nice. By the way, happy 12th day of Christmas today. Today, of course, is the epiphany. And 50 degrees when you step outside. Now, as you can see, uh, not only on the graphic, but also behind that graphic, we do have some clouds that have moved on in here. But a lot of uh, spots in and around our area are still reporting some clear skies. That bottom number, dew points at 39. So we still have a big difference between the temperature and the dew point temperature. However, as those numbers start to come a little bit closer together in parts of the area, you'll want to watch out for maybe a patch or two of fog to try and form up later on this morning. 77 for a high temperature today, so we are once again going to be a good 10, close to 15 degrees above normal. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot. The allergens, mountain cedar, which was sky high the previous day, is about a third or more of what uh, it, or less of what it was the previous day. Still on the high side at 3,400. All right, take a look at what the wind is doing right now. There's not much of a breeze out there, and as the humidity tries to come back on in, when you have very light wind, that's when you try and you start to see a little bit of uh, uh, fog develop around the area. The only thing as of right now is down here around Corpus Christi and then well out to the east and to the, uh, the southeast. But again, just keep that in mind that there may be a couple of little patches of that throughout the morning. So some clouds hanging around here, chilly, a patch or two of fog and then more sunshine later on today. Warm. The humidity is going to begin its return as we go on through the day and that's going to lead to a lot of clouds tonight. Mist, drizzle, some fog tomorrow morning, then a couple of showers throughout the day and the front's going to move through then later on late tomorrow in the overnight hours Sunday. It's not a huge blast of cold air. It will get rid of the humidity. We'll have some leftover showers Sunday, but then we're going to be clearing on out temperatures in the upper 60s closer to a normal reading still above that, but looks like a really nice afternoon on Sunday. More details in the weekend looking into next week coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Happy Friday, happy Stephen. Friday. Happy no, on the roads. Yeah, happy on the roads and no turtlenecks later, Mike. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at your morning commute because 410 at Broadway is not a bad spot, but let's get a peek around town and show you some of your favorite roads. 410 at Marbach is a very quiet area this morning and really just a few folks getting on by. 281 at San Pedro, you could see one of those lanes just probably one folk, uh, one driver, I should say, uh, making their way on through. But uh, no major issues to report at this point. We do have a few stalls out there, but other than that, it is all quiet on the roadway, and that is the same 
story here on our map. Let's take a look at those travel times because if your destination is the Alamo City, well, you're in luck. It's I-37 northbound and those uh, the northbound lines, pardon me, looks to be about 28 minutes. So pleasant drive from Pleasanton. And it's always the usual drive time on US 90 for our friends that are traveling in from Castroville, 30 minutes in the eastbound lanes. And right now that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 17 minutes at this hour. So things again, normal here in town. But of course, in the next hour or so, things will probably change as more folks wake up and get their day started. But looks like there's some flashing lights there at 35 at New Braunfels. Not sure if that is a first responder or a police officer, but we'll keep a close eye on it and have an update in the next few minutes. David, Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a garage fire forced seven people to evacuate their home on San Antonio's east side late last night. San Antonio firefighters say most of them were sleeping when they smelled smoke and eventually were able to get out. Firefighters contained the flames to just the garage. The residents will be out of their home for a little while, though. The firefighters say they did find a cat that had died in one of the bedrooms, but a rabbit made it out alive. So far, no word yet on the official cause. San Antonio police slap handcuffs on a middle school teacher accused of soliciting a 14-year-old female student. 49-year-old Lloyd Pegus arrested months after the victim's parents filed a report back in June. According to police, the girl's parents found messages, pictures, and videos on her phone that were, quote, sexual in nature, unquote. Now, the name of the middle school where Pegos works has not been released yet. He is charged with online solicitation of a minor. Texas lawmakers will head to Austin next Tuesday for the start of the 88th legislative session. On their plate, how to allocate nearly $30 billion in surplus on the budget this year. The governor is asking for property tax relief. Local lawmakers say education, including school debt, teacher pay, mental health, and health care should be priorities. Many say they are trying to stick to the bread and butter matters that help families every day. In a few weeks, as bills get filed, we'll get a better idea on what's being put to the forefront this season. The top three state leaders might also try to have more say this, season, this session. The big three state leaders, the, the governor, the lieutenant governor, the state house speaker, they all believe they came out of this most recent election with, with pretty convincing results and victories. And so they, each of them in their own way believes that they have a mandate heading into this next session. So I think we may see state leaders be more confident and more willing to throw around their weight uh, than they have in the past. Spending and laws on border security will likely be the most I, uh, in the headlines. We are looking live at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. A group of conservative Republicans continue to block their own conference leader, Kevin McCarthy, from becoming the next House Speaker. McCarthy has now lost 11 rounds of votes in the last three days. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest from Washington. Republican Kevin McCarthy now gearing up for a fourth day of votes on whether or not he should be the new GOP House Speaker. Not been has not been a speaker has not been elected. Vote after vote, McCarthy has now failed 11 times. The last time a speaker's race went beyond nine ballots was 1859. But the California Republican telling ABC as he left Capitol Hill late last night, he's willing to drag this out. I'm not putting any timeline on I just think we've got some progress going on. We've got members talking. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. McCarthy hopes caving to key demands from GOP holdouts will give him the votes he needs. He's even offering to change the House rules so one single lawmaker could force a vote to remove a speaker. Some of his supporters say he's giving in too much. We cannot allow a small group of folks commit political terrorism, and that's what they're doing. Democrats pointing to the dysfunction. Kevin McCarthy's ego and his pursuit of this speakership at all costs is drowning out the voices and the needs of the American people. Without a speaker, the House is at a standstill. Members can't be sworn in, meaning they also can't help their constituents on everything from passport requests to helping people apply for federal benefits. Top lawmakers also warning they won't have security clearance until they're sworn in. No classified briefings with military or intelligence. There's also concern that some staffers won't get paid and could even lose benefits. One Republican tweeting, the handful holding up the speaker election is not helping Americans, but directly hurting them. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 509 and right at 50 degrees.
You're flying the friendly skies soon. How some Delta passengers will soon be able to get free Wi-Fi on flights. And some local restaurants dealing with rodent problems. Find out if they're fixed. Next. I hope so. <laughs> Taking a look out there with live cam. Yeah, you can see the clouds already. 50 degrees. Not too bad out there. Happy Friday. We'll be right back. The health department recently suspended the license of two local restaurants due to rodent infestations. The businesses were back up and operating when Tim Gerber stopped by this week to find out if they had made the required corrections. So here's what Tim found behind the kitchen door. Yaya's Thai restaurant in the 5300 block of McCullough Avenue had its license temporarily suspended following an inspection in late November that earned them a 76. The inspector found rodent droppings on plates and other signs of live rodent activity in the business. The restaurant not allowed to reopen until it removed the rodent droppings and the areas were cleaned and sanitized. I dropped by this week to see if they'd made any improvements. Have you guys been able to solve the, the rodent problem? You no. Know, um, well, I don't know anything about this. Hold on. Sorry, one minute. Only on his second day on the job, Sam Namdi quickly returned with some information. He said they were only closed for a day and a half to clean the restaurant. Does the rodent problem still exist or? Uh, not that I know of. I don't see them around. They're still in the process of hiring an exterminator and waiting for a follow-up inspection. They hope customers give them a second chance. We just want them to know that they're in good hands and that, you know, we just want to make sure our food quality is coming out at its best in the most safe and cleanest environment. <laughs> La Cabana de Jalisco also had its license suspended in late November due to a rodent problem, earning them a 73. There were rodent droppings found in dry rice storage. That food was condemned. More rodent droppings were found throughout the business. The ice machine had black and red mold-like sludge and stored knives still had food debris on them. Tortillas were found wrapped in a cloth rag and an employee was seen handling more tortillas with their bare hands. Hello. Hi. I'm with KSAT 12. Is there a manager I could speak with? Brian Ramirez explained they shut down for two days and thoroughly cleaned the family-owned business. Have you been able to, to keep the rodents out there? Yeah, it's, it's been a lot better. He hopes customers remember the high scores they've had in the past. And we do our best. We do what we can, you know what I mean? Okay. So, so when that happened, we were just kind of like, man, you know, like, we have to clean up, do everything, and that's what we did. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. 515 and 50 degrees. Up next, we're going to tell you about Apple's quiet launch of a new catalog of an AI narrated audi audiobook. Plus, how Zoom is trying to make all those boring online meetings a little more fun. When cold <laughs> symptoms keep you up, Try Vicks Night Will Severe. Just one dose starts to relieve nine of your worst cold and flu symptoms to help take you from nine to none. From max strength nighttime relief, Night Will Severe. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, sore throat, best sleep with a cold medicine. Now's the time for cleaner indoor air with an air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer. You've known us for carpet cleaning, but we've been cleaning air ducts for over 20 years. We do things the right way, cleaning your entire system. So if you need an air duct cleaning, call 1-800-STEAMER today. Welcome back. It's 518 and it's Friday morning. Yay! Yay. Oh my God. No. <laughs> yeah, that, that yay better? sounded yeah, better. I yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. We're getting there. More like enthusiasm, good. yeah. I'm waking up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, and uh, I guess no problems yet. No, it's a great way to start Friday morning, right? Yeah, no problems on the roadway. Let's get a quick look around town. You can see that these trans guy cameras are just catching a whole lot of pavement out there and uh, maybe uh, empty spot there, but I'll get there in just a moment. Let's get back to trans guide here. You can see that. Uh, yeah, it's really not a lot to show you and that's always expected this early in the morning. If you are a regular GMSA viewer, this is a type of uh, traffic that we really see at this hour. 35 at Maine looks a little busy at this time, but not as busy as we'll expect 
expected to see maybe in the next hour or two, but give it some time right now. Uh, it's just tranquility out on the roadway, so maybe a perfect time to take advantage of them. Let's get you to the map. OK, lots of green out there, but you notice that there are a few of those construction barrels. That means that uh, we are going to see some of those road closures still take place well into the weekend here off State Highway 46 for our friends in Comal County. Signal work will continue. This started on Tuesday, January 3rd and should wrap actually on Friday, January 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th, but uh, we should be lucky there. Nine in the evening, five in the morning, so watch out for crews because we will see alternating lane closures in both directions from Bentwood Drive to Fair Hills Drive. But that information is on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. But for right now, traffic is moving along just fine, but I uh, haven't spotted the moon on any of these shots, Mike. Now nah, we got a lot of clouds that have uh, slid on in here pretty much around the metropolitan area, but this picture, this is very good. It looks like something out of Ooh. At Halloween time. Yeah, I like that. Great shot there. Almost full. Well, technically today it is full and it is the uh, the wolf moon. Here's those clouds that we were talking about because, yeah, the past couple of days we've been watching the moon set right over here in the, the western sky. But, yeah, got a few clouds hanging around here. 54 Comfort, 53 Helotus. Temperatures are up compared to this time yesterday. 44 in Balverde. And not everybody is reporting cloudy skies as of right now. So it'll just be just a few of them here and there. Dew point temperatures. These numbers measure moisture in the atmosphere are up now compared to the air temperatures. Let me go back to this one. They're still about 10 degrees or so below some of these numbers, but as these numbers kind of come up and they get closer to the actual air temperatures, we don't have much of a breeze out there right now. As a matter of fact, a lot of spots, the air is just calm. That's setting the stage for some of the fog to form up. Not seeing any fog yet. But just be on the lookout the next couple of hours. Temperatures will be staying mid upper 40s, right around 50 throughout the rest of the morning. And we'll keep some of these clouds around this morning. Then we'll see some sunshine later on today. 70 at noon. It's going to be a warm one today. We did hit 75 yesterday, going for 77 later on today with more sunshine around there and a few clouds. Wind out of the south at 10, 20 miles per hour. So a bit of a breeze that's going to continue to pull in the humidity. So these numbers will continue to go up dew points. And so by later on this afternoon, not like it's going to be oppressively humid, but you'll notice it. And then you'll really notice it going into tonight as well as overnight into tomorrow morning with all this humidity. That's what's going to help out with some a lot of fog and mist tomorrow morning. And then we'll have a couple of showers throughout the day. There is some drier air, though, that will eventually come on in here. And that's as the front passes through going into Sunday. A few clouds hanging around here this morning. And then uh, we'll see more sunshine later on today. Then the clouds in the overnight hours. And that's when we'll see some of that mist and drizzle around here. Notice how and this this is even with a couple of computer models been watching. They're not really bullish with the rain. There will be a few showers here and there. Call it a 30 40% chance for some rain. Then we go into over the night and Sunday morning and we'll have a few showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. The majority of this, though, as you can see, is going to be to the east and southeast east of I 35 and that will be in the morning hours Sunday. Then we're going to be uh, clearing out in the afternoon on Sunday. A little bit lower temperatures, but we'll get rid of the humidity as well, so it'll be comfortable on Sunday afternoon. 70 at noon, most of the sunny skies, high temperature come up to 77, so we're going to be almost 15 degrees above normal later on this afternoon. Then more clouds overnight, mist drizzle in the morning, and just kind of one of those yucky sort of mornings tomorrow, it looks like, and we'll have a few showers around throughout the day, and then overnight uh, tomorrow night into early Sunday. 67 on Sunday, but we'll have lower humidity and then those temperatures are nothing really January ish mm -hmm. all the way through next week. But I'm, I'm OK with that because I, I feel like we might see January temperatures oh, at yeah. some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I keep saying, February's right around the corner. <laughs> we'll get ready for that. We know what that month can bring. <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. Thank you, Mike. It is 523 and our little icon says it's up to 51 degrees. All right. And let's look at our winning lot of numbers. We have pick three, two, nine, one, fireball nine, daily four, nine, five, three, three, fireball five. And your cash five is one, two, three, twenty nine, thirty five. Texas two step seventeen, twenty six, thirty one, thirty three. Bonus ball is twenty three.
in today's Tech Bytes, a new perk on Delta Airlines. Starting next month, SkyMiles members will get free in-flight Wi-Fi. Right now, Delta passengers, excluding some T-Mobile subscribers, must pay for the service. It should be available on hundreds of jets by the end of the year. Apple has launched a new catalog of audiobooks narrated by artificial intelligence. It says the AI option will promote independent authors by helping them meet the growing demand for audiobooks at a much lower price tag. But critics of the move say listeners want to hear an authentic human voice. Finally, Zoom is working on human avatars for its video meeting app. They're meant for less formal meetings and allow users to be present without actually appearing on camera. For now, the avatars are only available to beta testers, which require a paid Zoom account. If I were going to tell a Zoom joke, trust me, it wouldn't even be remotely funny. Those are your tech bites. That's cute. Very good. Yeah, remotely I, funny. I like that. I kind of like the characters for Zoom, though. Yeah. So, you know, if like you get up in the morning and you're not really all together. Yeah, which is. Throw the little character <laughs> just, in there. Yeah, that would be great. I, I don't know. Yeah. I would like to choose mine, you know, like put Hello like, Kitty up there or something. You know somebody's going to take it a little too far at some point. I'm sure. It'll be interesting to see, though. Yeah. 528, 51 degrees. In Buffalo Bills safety, DeMar Hamlin is being told he's won the game of life after going into cardiac arrest. Still ahead, how Hamlin is already communicating with friends and family this morning. Plus, while the controversy surrounding Senator Tony City Councilman Clayton Perry continues to grow, this time with a TABC investigation. We've got some good news this morning. Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin now communicating with his family since he went into cardiac arrest. We've got an update for you on his condition and what the NFL is saying about the situation going forward. That is good news. And let's look out there with live cam this Friday morning. A uh, few more vehicles on the roadway, mm -hmm. 531, and it is 52 degrees out there. Good morning. Happy Friday. Mike, it's Friday. Yay! 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 <laughs> I love the enthusiasm. Yes. We're going to have confetti no, going off. Yeah. Yeah. No, kind of uh, just on. wait till 2 p.m., right? Oh, yeah. If you weren't watching earlier, Dave gave me a hard time because I wasn't as enthusiastic yeah. as yes. I should be for a Friday. So, uh, I guess Friday. Down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only downside is the fact that we do have a lot of clouds hanging around here. So we can't really see the, uh, the full moon, obviously. That's been holding temperatures up. So we are in the 50s as of right now here in town. 52 to be exact. That dew point has been creeping upward a little bit of a breeze out of the northwest. Now, you look at the temperatures, which again are on the, the milder side, warmer than yesterday, mid upper 40s, low 50s, and then such as at Rio Medina, you've got 49 for the air temperature, 49 for the dew point, which means 100% humidity, and there is a hardly any breeze out there. So the stage is set for some fog to develop. Haven't seen anything reported as of yet, just well down along the coast, but just be on the lookout with these, you know, these ingredients that are in place. Mountain cedars on the high side, of course, although it went down, oh gosh, anywhere from, uh, it's one third or even a quarter of what it was the previous day. Went down a whole bunch still on the high side, obviously. Mold is uh, on the low side. 70 at noon today, 77 for a high temperature. We will see more sunshine. Clouds hanging around here this morning. And again, a patch or two of fog and southeasterly wind at 10 to uh, 20 miles per hour. So it will be somewhat on the breezy side. And that southeasterly wind is just going to continue to pump in the humidity around here. Then a lot of clouds overnight. A lot of clouds throughout the day. Tomorrow, mist drizzle in the morning and even a couple of showers. Now the front's going to move on through here. It's going to be nice. It's not going to be bone chilling cold, but it's going to clear us out for Sunday. So good looking day in a Sunday afternoon. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority pretty good on the road still. Yeah, same uh, trend continues over here, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways 35 at New Braunfels. You can see just a few folks making their way on by earlier. We spotted some flashing lights out there. Didn't look like it was too big of an issue, and you can see right now both those north and south bound lanes aren't really experiencing any trouble at all. In fact, there's no trouble out there everywhere else. Let's get you a quick look around town and show you what you can expect this early in the morning. You can see 281 at San Pedro. Again, uh, the commute is just getting maybe a little bit busier there. Uh, those southbound lanes of 281. A lot of folks tend to travel by there pretty early in the morning. So just take your time if you're traveling in that area. US 90 at General McMullen. Same story there. But the map, of course, is showing the same uh, same trend as well. Where we see a lot of green this early in the morning. And if you notice closer to the southeast side, we just picked up a crash off of the highway there. So we'll find out what's going on and keep you updated. But it 
doesn't look like it's really impacting the majority of the commute at this time. So good news there and good news. If you are traveling into San Antonio this early in the morning, it's still green from Seguin on I-10 westbound. 29 minutes is what you can expect for our friends that are coming up from Lavernia on 87 northbound. It's about a 33 minute drive time and for our friends in Floresville, 27 minutes to the Alamo City. Back here in town, 35 in New Braunfels, the same shot we started with just maybe shows two folks making their way on by and 35 at San Marcos getting a tad bit busier, but we'll keep a close eye on things and have those updates right here on GMSA. David Steph. Thank you, Stephen. We got some breaking news for you now. San Antonio police searching the downtown area trying to find a man who attacked someone with a knife. They say the victim is another man who was slashed all over his body. Katrina Weber is live near South Rio and Guadalupe streets with that story. And Katrina, do they know what led to that? Well, good morning. Police believe that those two men were involved in some sort of an argument inside a limo. Now, that car right here is the crime scene. Police working and processing it. You can see it tucked in the back corner. This is the parking lot of Emmy Rodriguez funeral home, and police believe that that suspect and a woman were living in that limo. They say the victim at some point showed up and the two men got into an argument. Now, let me give you a look at the video because the victim did not stay here after he was cut. He he made his way across the street to a motel, the River Inn Motel here in the 900 block of South Frio, where he knocked on the door of a friend and asked for help. Police were able to get to that victim, uh, take him to the hospital. They say he did have cuts all over his body from the knife. The man who police believe stabbed him and the woman who was with him took off. And those are the two people who police are looking for at this point. Now, again, they say that they believe that that suspect and the woman had been living some Somehow in this limo, uh, the suspect showed up and got into the argument, but he told police he has no idea what the argument was about because that suspect and woman apparently only spoke Spanish and he says he did not understand. So he wasn't even able to tell officers why he was cut, why this argument broke out. But again, police still looking for that suspect and the woman who they believe is a witness to all of this. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, the NFL has canceled the Bills Bengals game that was suspended Monday night when Bills player DeMar Hamlin suffered that cardiac arrest. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, he is showing significant signs of improvement. This morning, a remarkable step in the road to recovery for DeMar Hamlin. The Bills' safety has awakened and, while not yet able to speak, is able to communicate by writing. One of his first questions When he asked, Did we win? the answer is, Yes, you know, Damari, you won. You've won the game of life. Overnight, the Buffalo News running this powerful cartoon, showing Damar asking that question, his heartbeat answering yes. Hamlin is still on a ventilator in the ICU, but doctors say he is able to move his hands and feet and seems to have no neurological issues. It's not only that the lights are on, we know that he's home, uh, and that it appears that all, all the cylinders are firing. Uh, what's in his brain. Hamlin collapsed on the field after this tackle. Doctors say the process of reviving him began less than one minute after his heart stopped. One of the people rushing to help Hamlin, Bill's assistant athletic trainer, Denny Kellington. He rushed to Hamlin's aid and administered CPR, likely saving his life. You talk about a, um, a real leader, a real hero um, in saving DeMar's life. Yesterday, the Bills took the field for practice, players holding up three fingers, showing support for the man who wears number three. Players and coaches were emotional. Being on that field, it, <clears throat> you, know, you, you, you lose sleep, you hurt for your brother. The scene just replays over and over in your head. It's something we'll never forget. For now, DeMar to be awake and his mom to be able to share that with him is it's incredible. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Back here in Texas, new video shows police catching up to an escaped inmate who is now back in custody in Tyler. Timothy Chappelle managed to break out of a van when he was being transported between two Smith County jails. While he was on the run, he broke into two homes. Deputies then caught him and returned him to jail yesterday. Authorities say Chappelle was able to escape by kicking out a window. It was reinforced with a cage, but not good enough. And the force of the kick stripped the screws holding it in place. The sheriff says the van will now be retrofitted with bars. Chappelle was originally in custody on a criminal mischief charge. He's now facing burglary and escape charges as well. 
The U.S. military introduced new rights this week for parents in uniform. The military is doubling the amount of leave time for service members who give birth. It's also providing leave for new parents who don't give birth, including those who adopt and foster children long term. The new policy gives 12 weeks of parental leave to service members who give birth and also provides 12 weeks of leave for non-birth or adoptive parents. Previously, only the birthing parent could take parental leave and it was limited to six weeks. A well-known volcano back putting on a show in Hawaii. Kilauea volcano is erupting again. This is a photo of the eruption taken from the U.S. Geological Survey's webcam. It's Hawaii's volcano observatory that detected a glow in the volcano's summits. Officials say the eruption is currently confined to a large crater and poses no hazards to communities. But the eruption is happening in a closed area of the Hawaiian Volcanoes National Park. That's impressive. Very impressive. And also scary to say. <laughs> yes, you think it, about it. it's true. It's true. That's amazing. 539, 52 degrees. Police say San Antonio City Councilman Clayton Perry was served 14 drinks in just four hours at a local bar with the Texas Alcoholic and Beverage Commission is saying so far about their investigation into that bar. And once you get outside with live cam, clouds in the area today, a little cloudy this weekend, maybe a shot at some showers. Mike goes to Hayes Edge forecast for the rest of the Friday and on into the weekend. And happy Friday. Good morning. The controversy surrounding San Antonio City Councilman Clayton Perry continues to grow. He faces a DWI charge while on sabbatical, and the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission is investigating accusations of over-serving. Police say Perry was served 14 drinks in four hours at a bar called the Evil Olive on the north side. The establishment is still open and operating, which TABC says is allowed throughout the investigation. The general manager of Backyard on Broadway says the decision to serve customers is done on a case-by-case -case basis. However, it's the establishment and server's responsibility to make sure no one exceeds their limit. Come to the bar and order, you make eye contact, and we can kind of tell just by the way their eyes are, and then the way that they're standing, if they're like leaning on the bar, how they're talking. Um, Surge speech is really common too. TBS. C sent us a statement regarding the evil olive, saying in part there are no findings to report at this time. We tried speaking to management at the evil olive last night, but they declined to comment. 544 and 51 degrees. Up next, why Bed Bath & Beyond says it's having some trouble and may not survive for much longer. And welcome back. It's 546. In your morning consumer headlines, you might want to use that 20% off Bed Bath & Beyond coupon soon. The company just admitted in a regulatory filing it probably will be, won't be able to continue operating as is. The filing says the chain is exploring possibilities and a bankruptcy filing is among them. That goes along with what analysts have been predicting for some time. Bed Bath & Beyond stock plunged more than 20% Thursday, landing it below $2 per share. It has never been that low before. The company operates about 950 stores and employs 32,000 workers. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg getting heat from his own party over his handling of the recent holiday travel delays. Two dozen of the Democrats who plan to sit on the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure want his department to come down harder on Southwest Airlines. Southwest canceled more than 15,000 flights after a winter storm last month. The airline says it is issuing refunds for canceled flights as well as additional incurred expenses. And I've been looking at the trans guide cameras from this angle. Don't see any problems yet, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. You are right, Steph. Uh, not any, or no problems to report at this hour. 37 at Pecan Valley. A uh, very quiet start to our Friday morning. Uh, we know that's going to change in the next few minutes or so, but right now, check out this. 410 at Jackson Keller. It is smooth sailing for a lot of folks that may be getting their morning started early with us to grab that cup of coffee. But let's get you to the map. Uh, again, we still have that minor crash that was reported off of 37 near 181 somewhere, but really not causing any issues for drivers at that point so we're not too concerned about it but hopefully everyone is doing okay 
Let's get you to some construction work off of 410 on the west side of San Antonio bridge and signal work, I should say, and that's actually been ongoing for a little while now overnight. It will begin at eight in the evening and should wrap at five in the morning. Now this will continue all the way up until Monday, January 16th, so we still have some ways to go. We'll see a full closure of the main lanes in both directions from Bandera Road to State Highway 151. So just I know it's a lot of information, but again, plan your commute ahead of time by heading to kset.com slash traffic. Full list of closures there. But back here, traffic has just been moving along swimmingly. Uh, so no problems to report on this Friday morning, guys. That's good news yeah. for Friday. Yeah. Also, yeah. I haven't heard swimmingly in a long time. Swimmingly. Yes. You, swimmingly. you could almost do that. Right yeah, just about today. I mean, we're going to be in the upper 70s yeah. if you would like to uh, swimmingly through the afternoon. Not it was completely ungrammatical. Do not it's no okay. judgment. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it the works. thing is? You knew what I was talking about. Yes, so, we, anyway. did. we did. Uh, the moon this morning, we cannot see it, so we have to rely on all these beautiful pictures that folks have sent in. This was from yesterday morning when we had some clear skies. Now we got a lot of clouds hanging around here. Of course, today is the day for the, uh, the full moon, and yep. No moon set this morning, unfortunately, and the clouds which were just in and around San Antonio metropolitan area earlier have now kind of covered a good chunk of our area. That's what's holding temperatures up in the uh, 50s. Everybody has actually gone up over the past couple of hours. 50 right now, Rio Medina, Hondo, uh, 52 Castroville, same thing out there at the airport. Still a couple of 40s scattered about here, but again, with this cloud coverage holding things up and the dew point temperatures now not everywhere, but in places like like Lotus Rio Medina, where dew points and temperatures are running neck and neck and with hardly any bit of a breeze out there. We've got the stage set for some fog. Now, the only places reporting anything as of right now, Beeville and Corpus Christi, well down to the southeast, but all the ingredients are in place, so just be on the lookout for some of that over the next couple of hours. The clouds are very low upstairs in the atmosphere. We've got a lot of fairly dry air up there, so you know the last couple of days we've had those just gorgeous blue skies. So once these low clouds break up later on this morning, we with this darker shade of gray and the water vapor imagery upstairs, uh, we're going to be seeing more sunshine out there. Temperature is going to be staying steady for the next couple of hours with a fair amount of clouds and we're going to make it up to 70 at noon today and the wind's going to start to pick up out of the south 10 15 20 miles per hour a bit breezy at times 77 for a high temperature with that uh, southerly to southeasterly wind that's just going to continue to pull in the humidity and so that's going to lead to a whole bunch of clouds Now we'll have those few clouds hanging around here this morning then like I said some sunshine then the clouds come back in overnight with all that humidity that's going to also lead to some fog tomorrow morning a little mist and drizzle and this particular computer model throughout the first portion of the day is not overly enthusiastic about any rain. But as we go into the evening hours, as the next front approaches, that will then touch off a few showers, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms that'll go into Sunday morning. Yeah, and the best chance to see anything is going to be pretty much south and east of 35. And then things are going to be clearing out as we go on into the afternoon hours on Sunday. As far as the humidity, going to be doing a bit of a roller coaster, so we'll have these little weak fronts moving on through here. Humidity comes up tomorrow, drops down on Sunday, tries to come back up a little bit on Monday, and then we again get these little waves moving on through. So not anything really dramatic as far as temperatures. Now, granted, we will be on the warm side today by 15 degrees, but we're not seeing any big Arctic blasts or anything like that. 70, mostly sunny skies today at noon after we get rid of some of these low morning clouds and then 77 for high temperature later on today. Humidity comes back up, starts to move back in here throughout the afternoon and then especially overnight. Tomorrow morning, mist drizzle and then a few showers scattered about throughout the day, especially overnight into early Sunday mainly to the east in the eastern half of our area. 67 on Sunday, but lower humidity. And then good looking next week. Nothing overly January ish as far as temperatures and another uh, decent front. Not a big blast of cold air, but decent front comes through on Thursday. Not too bad. Mm -mm. When's the all American? Is that tonight? Saturday? Tomorrow. That's tonight? Tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon. Oh, okay. Tomorrow. Yeah. At the dome. Yeah. But at least that's inside. Right. Yeah. Just in case with the rain. 72 rain. degrees and yeah. no clouds. Not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be always perfect in the Alamo Dome. Exactly. Hey, a new SpongeBob SquarePants video game is servicing soon. Coming up next, we're going to tell you about that and some other games arriving the first month of the new year.
Scott Pilgrim is back again. Among its many iterations, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World The Game Complete Edition is now playable via the Steam game service. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is getting an upgrade, with new versions specific for the PlayStation 5 and next-gen Xbox consoles. Gamers can unleash their inner Saiyan on January 13th. Sign up and be a part of my crew. If ye be seeking adventure with salty pirates, you may have found the right game. Tortuga, a pirate's tale, drops players into a piratical adventure in where else but the Caribbean. The game sets sail on Xbox and PlayStation consoles January 19th. Magic bubbled soap. Breathe life into your dreams. And if nautical nonsense be something you wish, there's SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake, in which our absorbent hero has destroyed Bikini Bottom using magical soap and must put things right. Naturally. The Cosmic Shake commences January 31st for Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. And ahead in our next hour of GMSA, the Cowboys getting ready for their regular season finale against the Commanders Sunday. There's a lot riding on this one. We've got a preview for you, plus a new trend that aims to help those who want to cut back on drinking. We'll tell you more about dry January and also ahead, scary moments at a Southside bar after gunshots break out. What we know so far, that's coming up. And as we go to break, there's a live look at trans guy. It's pretty smooth out there right now. Stephen Cavazos has got an update for you on the traffic. Mike's got your forecast. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back.